Top 10 coaches. We're up to number five. 10, Doug Peterson. Nine, Mike Vrabel. Eight, Kyle Shanahan. Seven, Sean McVay. Six, Sean Payton. Five, drum roll, please. Seahawks coach Pete Carroll. And that's how this all came up. Somebody had left him off their top 10 list of coaches. I was on KJR in Seattle and they asked me, well, is Pete Carroll a top 10 coach? I was like, yeah, I think he is. And that's what inspired me to do the list. But look at what Carroll has done with the Seahawks over the course of the past 12, 13 years. They built that Legion of Boom. They won a Super Bowl. They went back to another one. Could have slash should have won that one. And now they're in this second act where they're rebuilding that defense. And their offense is pretty damn good. They're a little more balanced, maybe, than they were a decade ago when they finally made their run. They're a team that that could could threaten in the NFC. I mean, the Eagles and the 49ers are the two best teams. It doesn't take much to throw a team off. A couple of injuries, a couple of fluke losses. Maybe teams catch up to some of the things you did last year that worked so well. Maybe people will have solutions for those quarterback sneaks. When you look at the next cut of teams in the NFC, Cowboys, Seahawks, Seahawks are in a position to, to be pretty damn good this year. And they've been pretty damn good every year with Pete Carroll. Think of the consistency. And, you know, I, it's a simple approach, defense and run the ball. Defense and run the ball. And it led to frustrations because Russell Wilson wanted to be Patrick Mahomes. He wanted to be Josh Allen. He got his wish last year and it didn't work. Well, it may work this year with Sean Payton. He wanted to be the guy for whom the offense operated. He wanted to be the centerpiece, the focal point of the offense. And again, last year it didn't work. The Seahawks don't want that one person to be the centerpiece of anything. That's why it was kind of surprising to think they were considering quarterback at five, but I do think they would have taken Anthony Richardson if he had been there, that they're convinced he was going to be a generational type talent that they couldn't say no to. And they'd have him under contract for three or four years before they had to give him big money. But I just think that they've got a lot of things going in the right direction. They had the two first round picks this year. They both could turn out to be very good for the Seahawks. And it's just, there's something about Pete Carroll's way. And maybe what you need to do after every few years is clean out the locker room and start over. Maybe the message starts to get stale for some of the guys who have heard it five, six, seven, eight years. But that idea of competition, and he's got that boundless energy. And if you see him on the field before the game, like he, he's hopping around and throwing this, and then you see him away from the game, and he, he looks older than every bit his age. He looks 20 years younger when he's out there before the game, and he looks a lot older when you see him away from the field moving around. So there's something about that, that atmosphere that gets the most out of him. He's got a natural enthusiasm. He's young at heart. And he's been a pretty damn good coach over the years. That's the main reason. There are many others, but interests of time prevent me from going into excessive detail. I think most out there will agree that he deserves a spot in the top 10. And when you get to this point, five, six, four, seven, who knows? But for everything he's done and what he's still doing and what I think he's going to do this year, Pete Carroll comes in at number five on the PFT list of top 10 coaches for 2023. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.